Tarantula uh, Face or Body Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone! In today's video I'm going to be doing this face art design for arachnophobia. And I have small arachnophobia, and by that I do not mean that I have a minor fear of arachnids. No, I have a fear of small arachnids. So little jumping spiders or daddy long legs are the ones that hang out around my garage door. Not comfortable with those. But a big tarantula like this guy? I love those. They're one of my dream pets. So that probably makes me weird, but I'm okay with that. I hope you like this. And like I said, it's pretty easy, so it's not too bad. And it's something that if you really want to freak out a sibling, you can do it. My sister would freak if she saw me like this, which would be fantastic. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, anyways, uh, don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well. And so I'm going to begin by using some foundation that I got from Ite Mineral Cosmetics. It's just a powder foundation that's really, really nice and has a, a satiny, very smooth texture. So I began with some moisturizer as a primer, and I'm just going to be buffing that into my skin in circular motions with the Kabuki brush that they have on their website as well. That brush is so nice. It's really soft, and it's relatively large, which is nice too. And so I'm just going to continue applying it. And... It actually has really nice coverage, and then I'm going to add just a little bit of bronzer, and then a little bit of blush as well. And I'll put the colors that I used in the description box below as well, and all of these are from their website. And like I said, that brush is so nice, and it comes in a little case too, which is kind of cool. And so now I'm going to be painting my tarantula. So I'm going to start with his abdomen in the back, and it's going to have just a slight point to it where his spinnerets would be. And then I'm going to be painting his cephalothorax in front of that, basically his head area. And that's going to be more of a rounder shape adding some fangs and then adding legs and I am looking at a photo when I'm doing this and so I got a good idea of how the legs um, because you know they don't all they're not symmetrical necessarily they're not standing straight they can stand however they want and so um, by looking at a photo I can get an idea of how he might be standing if he was actually standing there and I'm using brown body paint for this it's a water-based um, cake type body paint which is my favorite kind and so that's what I'm using here. And so I'm going to go back and forth and do the legs, you know, from side to side, not do all four on one side and then do all four on the other side. That's going to help keep it so that it's sort of imperfectly symmetrical, I guess. And just add legs. And I actually made this guy a little bigger than I originally intended to. I didn't want him to actually come down my face. Or the one foot kind of goes into my eyebrow some. That wasn't really my plan. It happened that way and it's fine. Uh, but I might make him a little smaller so he was more centered on my forehead if I were you. That just might make it a little easier. And I don't know. You can do it however you want. But I didn't intend to make him quite so big. Uh, but now I'm just going to take some black eyeshadow on a little angled brush. That's one I actually use for when I do eyeliner sometimes. And I'm just going to be adding a shadow under his legs. And so as I'm doing this, once again, I'm looking at how the shadows are on my photo. Just to help make sure that they're in the right place. That's something that's always helpful to do. And it's the same thing because the shadows aren't going to be exactly the same on each leg. Because it depends on how straightened out his legs are or how, how bent they are, what angle they're at. And all those things are going to make a difference on how the shadows appear. And I'm also just going to take and I'm going to shadow between his cephalothorax and his abdomen and just a little bit around each of those, each of those spider parts. And then I'm going to add another little shadow on each of his leg joints. And then just between his fangs and where he attaches right there. And then I'm just going to add... My particular tarantula has a couple little stripes on his back and so I'm going to add those as well. And now I'm going to be switching to black body paint and I'm going to be adding my other details. So I'm going to be sort of feathering out the edges and making him look like he's a little bit furry and adding some stripes on his legs. Now there are so many different kinds of tarantulas out there and so you can really be open with the patterns that you're painting on him. So uh, one that would look kind of cute would be like a rose hair or a pink toad or a red need. Any of those that have a little bit more color to them would be fun. I want to kind of go with a, I don't know, normal brown hairy looking tarantula. And so that's, that's where I went with this one. But there's so many options and so many colorful, beautiful ones that you could go with. And you can just do some research to find the one that you like the best. On my eyes, I'm just going to be doing just a little bit of a 
normal eye makeup i'm gonna do a cream color over my lid and then in the crease a couple shades of green i am wearing a green shirt or i was wearing a green shirt this day and so i wanted to have green on my eyes that's pretty much how i usually do things i'm very matchy matchy that way my makeup matches my clothing <laughs> and so that is carrying on here but you can you don't have to do any of the face makeup if you don't want you can paint this spider anywhere you want you could paint it on your arm or on someone's back or anywhere on your chest or you know there's really options here and then i'm just gonna tight line my eyes with black and that foundation that i used provided a really nice canvas for the body paint like i said it has sort of like a satiny finish on it which a really powdery foundation is going to make your body paint get thicker it's going to mix in with the paint and it's going to make it a little less fluid and easy to work with whereas a liquid foundation is going to maybe mix with it and make the colors almost smear some but this foundation has sort of a really soft finish on it which and it laid really smooth against my skin which is nice and so it didn't harm the body paint all and the body paint actually kind of floated on top of it which was really cool um, i'm going to be highlighting with just a little bit of a shimmery white pigment so i'm going to do that on my cheekbones above my upper lip and then in the corner of my eye and apply some lip gloss and that is it for the face portion of this video or for the makeup portion of this video and that's it thank you so much for watching i hope you like this fun little body paint and don't forget to share any recreations with me on facebook and instagram i'd love to see them and all the freaky spiders out there and i will see you in my next video bye